Hello my friends, you're watching Hard Video and Stuff, and in this video, we're gonna go through the latest rumors slash most likely specs of the highly anticipated Sony a7S III. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for this camera, so I scoured the internet and I tried to filter out anything that looked like a BS rumor, and hopefully for you, I've got a really good projection of what this camera actually will look like. First of all, Sony have given us a very loose ETA of the first half of 2020, and the, the rumor sites and camera news websites have all given a rough prediction of around just a little under $3,000 pounds and euros. So it's not gonna be a cheap camera by any means. So let's talk about the sensor. And yes, there are rumors that there's gonna be a 33 megapixel sensor that shoots 8K video. And there's another rumor that says that it's gonna use the same sensor that you'll find in the FX9 cinema camera, which is a 19 megapixel sensor and shoots in 6K. I think these are BS rumors, and I think the most likely one is one of the sensors that Sony has announced, the 15.36 megapixel backside illuminated sensor with quad bear design. This would be awesome. In fact, I actually did a video back in 2016 talking about my hopes for this camera. And one of my big wishes was that they keep the sensor at a similar resolution, but make it backside illuminated. So Sony, listen to me. No? No, they're not watching my videos, are they? What's quad bear, you ask? Well, it's an incredible sensor design where they basically cram four photo sites into one pixel space, which means it's gonna be really good for things like noise and 4K footage is gonna look more like 6K in terms of detail. This also means there could be some interesting HDR modes available by dividing the exposure time between the four photo sites. You could have two longer, two shorter, could be really interesting. With this amazing new sensor, it looks like it's gonna have a 12-bit readout, but only record 10-bit internally. External, not sure yet. It also seems like it's gonna have a 61 megapixel mode where it splits the quad bear design into four and acts as single pixels. That'd be pretty incredible. If that's true, it'd be obviously great for stills, but think of the average A7S user, they're gonna be using it for video most of the time, so I can't see this being a function that they're gonna be hankering after, but who knows? Onto the video specs, and most likely it looks like we're gonna be getting DCI 4K at 60p with a possible oversampled 4.8K mode. The sample rate looks to be up to 422 10-bit. Like I said, 12-bit is rumored, but I don't know, if when you have a look at the spec sheet, the sensor certainly looks like it's capable of it. I'll link that sheet if you want to see it below, but personally, I can't see it happening, not internally anyway. One really cool rumor is it looks like the 30 minute recording limit may be lifted, and if this is the case, I really approve, because that 30 minute limit only exists, it solely exists, so the camera companies can say, this camera is not a video camera, and it means they save on taxes. Lift that restriction, I say, eat the taxes, and let's just make this recording limit a thing of the past. In terms of high frame rates, 120 or higher, I haven't seen any rumors regarding this, so I have to assume that it's gonna be just HD 120, full frame. But I know that filmmakers would love 180 or even 240 frames per second. If they could do these high frame rates with autofocus, that would be incredible. But like I said, there's not a lot of talk about this, so I'm going to conservatively predict HD 120, full frame once again, but hopefully not. When it comes to body design, it looks like the A7S III is gonna get the same body as the A7R IV, except without the higher resolution EVF. It looks more likely that it'll get the EVF from the A7 III. Getting the same body as the A7R IV, of course, means we'll get the much needed and vastly superior Z-type battery, plus a touchscreen. These two things, in my eyes, are just essential, and hopefully we'll get two SD card slots at the same time. The rear LCD screen on the A7S II was abysmal, so I've gotta believe that there's gonna be some vast improvements there. I mean, it can't be worse, can it? Oh, and whilst I'm wishing for things, built-in NDs? That's not likely, that's just me wishing, of course. I'm making a big assumption that the A7S III is gonna have excellent face and eye detect autofocus in video. 
I mean, just look at the rest of the top of the range of, in the Alpha line. They all have really good autofocus, so there's really no excuse there. If Sony miss on any of these last few things, you know, the, the bigger battery, the touch screen, the dual SD cards, and the awesome autofocus, I can see them getting slammed in reviews. You know, they, they've been working on it for a long time, so they just got it, they've got to get it right. That's it for now, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Have Sony done enough with this, or should they be aiming higher? Are Canon or Panasonic gonna just leapfrog them in no time? What do you think? Will you be pre-ordering the A7S III? I will, and as soon as it arrives I'll be doing extensive testing for you guys. So definitely get subscribed and hit the bell to stay notified. And I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and the one below is my latest upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.